Uh, and what I'd like to do is just show a few examples, simple examples, um, or at least relatively simple. Um, I wanted to highlight a few of these. Um, this is kind of a cube made out of many cubes that are all different sizes and rotated in different ways. And um, if I play with the variables here, you can see that this cube kind of you know, gives me different results. Um, and maybe similar, uh, sort of the same cube, but I have subtracted all the little cubes from sort of the main cube uh, in this instance. Um, this uh, I was kind of thinking of as like a Swiss cheese slice uh, maker, uh, where I can basically, um, you know, have these circles that are subtracted um, from the rest of this and just a second. Um, and these can be switched around as well. So if I'm changing the seed value of this, then these I get these different um, kind of patterns in here. Um, this is a sort of grid of the uh, sort of default monkey uh, object that is in Blender. You can see, I think if you look at it, if you squint at it, you can make out that that's kind of a rigid grid. Uh, and then this example was just taking a circle and having a bunch of little dots that um, are arranged in different sizes kind of randomly on here. Um, and then I was gonna start playing with something on a grid here. So I wanted to look at how we go about um, working with geometry nodes and then have you be able to experiment with that. And I guess I should mention that what I'm demonstrating is I think a pretty simple or, or at least not terribly complicated setup. And you could use geometry nodes in like a million different ways. Um, but the way that I'm showing is, is, is one of them. And one of the things that it's really, really useful for is generating um, random arrangements of similar elements. So obviously in my example, I have all these little cubes that are different sizes and they're rotated in different orientations and they're kind of placed in random spots. And that makes this kind of geode looking thing. But you can think about it also in terms of like, let's say you were trying to have a bunch of grass on a, on a landscape and you drew one blade of grass, you could you know, use the geometry nodes variables to seed that in a bunch of random ways and have it bend this way and that, have it rotate this way and that, and have it be different scales uh, as well. So it's a really nice way to populate a whole scene or a whole object with a, like endless variations of the same um, form over and over again. So I wanted to walk through that um, really from scratch. And so I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna turn these off and just start with something new. So I'm going to add a cube. So if you just open up Blender, it will probably look something like this, hopefully, where you have a cube in the middle. Um, and in order to get started with geometry nodes, what we wanna do is if you're in the sort of normal layout mode like this, that we're sort of accustomed to, you may remember that up at the very top, um, there are all these different workspace um, tabs and so I can go down here to geometry nodes and I can click on that. Once I click on that, it's gonna subdivide my screen um, a little bit like this. You may have to, um, you know, move, you can move these things around a little bit. Um, so, you know, this is the workspace down here where we'll be placing these nodes. And then obviously we have this display window up top. So you can arrange that however you want, but the sort of default settings I think are, are good for this. Um, and so uh, that is where I want to begin. Has everybody been able to do that? Everybody's screen looks like this? Yeah? Okay, cool. So then what I want to do is I want to select my cube and I want to add a modifier kind of like the way we have been, but the modifier that I want to add is um, geometry nodes. Uh, so it's this one right here under generates. It's the seventh one down the list. I can click on that and then I want to click uh, new, and I can do it in either place. I can click new here, or I can click new here. I'm gonna get the same result. And I should get this, these two little boxes with the little green line in between them. So is everybody able to do that? Look, raise your hand if you're not, uh, if you haven't been able to keep up with that, awesome. Um, and so this is really simple, very straightforward. Um, I like to think about this, like if you ever played electric guitar, you know, like it's like a, you know, it's like a patch cable. Um, so it goes from your instrument to the amplifier, something like that. And if you unplug it, 
it goes away. So if I grab this little green uh, string here and let go of it, um, the cube disappears. And that's because the input, which was our cube, has been disconnected from the output, which is what is going to be visualized uh, here on screen. All right, so hopefully everybody's following that so far. And the way that this works is you can just plug in more and more things. And so to extend that sort of electric guitar analogy, um, if you've seen people play with effects pedals, like you're at a concert and somebody's stomping on a bunch of different things on the floor and it's changing the, the sound of the audio, it's a little bit like that. You know, these um, different nodes have different um, things that they can do to this. So um, there are a million of these. Um, different nodes that you can add in here. And I will be the first to admit that I'm not well versed in all of them. So what I typically always do is I just click on search and then there are some names that I'm looking for. So um, the one that I want, let me make sure I have the right one here is, yeah, distribute point on faces. So I'm gonna to go to add search and I can just start typing distribute or something like that. And I'm looking for distribute points on faces. I know that's a mouthful, but uh, you could search for points. You could search for distribute. You could type that whole thing in there. And I'm going to click on that. And it's going to give me a little node that says distribute points on faces. And I can just drop it right on this little green cable. So if you see when I hover over this little green cable turns white, and then I drop that there. And suddenly, um, my cube has been sort of dissolved into a number of points that are randomly scattered across the faces uh, of that original. Everybody been able to follow that? Is there anybody, raise your hand if you haven't got this type of outcome on your screen, the bunch of points on the face, okay. And um, it's doing this in a random way and you can change the density of it. So if I use this density slider and go up, then I get more and more points. Eventually I can kind of fill this thing in. It looks like a styrofoam, uh, you know, object or something like that. And if I go all the way down, you know, I can have all these points disappear. So that would be the density. And then the seed value, because this is random, uh, it just reruns the, it gives you a different random variable. So if I click on the seed value, I'm not adding more density. It's just changing the random distribution of those points. So if you don't like the way they look, you can try a different seed. It'll take the exact same information, just spread it about differently. I'm just kind of rolling the dice over and over. Um, so it's not changing the number of points, just kind of changing how they're laid out in there. Um, so I don't have to mess with that too much right now. Um, and then the points uh, are just points. So they don't have any like substantive, like they're not something that we could, uh, you know, physicalize and print, uh, materialize and print. Um, so what I wanna do is I want to have um, an instance of an object or a mesh on each one of those points. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to add search. And what I'm looking for now is a thing called instance on points. There's one called instances to points. I don't want that. I want instance on points. I'll leave that up there for a second. And so you can just think of an instance being, um, you know, one unit of whatever object you want to use. And it's going to place one unit of that on each point uh, in our little group. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to place this uh, to the right of uh, the distribute points on faces. And you'll see that my whole thing goes blank. I'm not panicking about that. The reason it's blank is because I haven't uh, told it what instance, what I want to use as an instance. Um, basically, it's going to reproduce whatever object I want on every single one of those points, but I do have to tell it like what object I want to use. So I have some different options here. Anybody have a preference? We could use uh, any of the existing uh, mesh objects, plane, a cube, circle, sphere, the monkey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it would be totally effective. Yeah. So you mean like instead of uh, the cube that I'm working with? Yeah. That at the very beginning you would use a sphere. You can. And actually, um, 
let me show you something really quickly. Uh, just as a, I, I like it and you know, okay, so I'm bypassing my instance on points and I'm having what we had before. And I wanted to mention that one of the things that's so powerful about the system is that you can switch out the elements really easily. So it's not like, you know, if you went way down the road and you had this cubic thing, you're like, you know what, it should have been a sphere. Usually that's like, okay, I'll start back over. Uh, so I could just go here to um, mesh primitives and I can select a sphere and I can just disconnect my cube, which is my original group output. And I can just plug in this sphere and now it will um, place those on there. So what's cool about it to me is like, you could have all kinds of inputs over here and then depending on what you're doing, you could switch that up. Um, great, okay. So uh, I'm gonna go back to the cube. I could also, if I wanted to, I could you know use a mesh primitive cube. There's not much of a difference. Um, I, I think the main thing I wanna get across is that you could either use like a mesh primitive or you could actually use any mesh that you've ever made. Like you could take one of your other models and use that as your starting point. It just might be super complicated, right? Like, so for our purposes today, I think it's a little bit simpler um, to just use a, a basic cube. Um, then I'm gonna open this back up. Okay, so we were talking about placing an instance on here. Um, and I guess I will do, I wanted to show that there's two ways to do this. So I could again do um, mesh primitives and let's say I'm gonna do, um, I'll be kind of boring and do cubes on cubes here. So I have a cube um, mesh primitive and I'm gonna plug in from where it says mesh to where it says instance. And that will sort of explode with uh, many, many cubes in here. Um, so I know it looks a little bit crazy on screen, but what that is is each one of those little random instances um, is a cube. And to show that a little bit better, I can make the, I can make this cube smaller and, and you can see it a little, you can see them a little bit better. So I'm just changing the dimensions of them. Maybe I'll change the density of it as well, have fewer cubes. And you can see that my cube is filled with other cubes and the cube that I use for the instance, I can change the dimensions of it and that will, um, you know, be recognized in there. And if you wanted to use something other than a cube, go for it. Um, you certainly could. Is everybody following that so far? Awesome. I wanted to show how you, another way that you can um, define an instance. So what I'm going to do is go back up to our uh, sort of usual menu here, and I'm going to go to add mesh. Um, monkey just to have something complex. I'm gonna move that out of the way a little bit. And one thing that I think is really cool um, is that I can find, our monkey is named Suzanne up here on my, um, uh, whatever you call this sort of browser over here. I can just left click and drag an object that's in my scene into the geometry nodes area. And when I let go of it, um, it'll create this, um, this little red box that says object info. And I could, you know, I could rename that if I want to. So basically, if you have something that you made from scratch that you'd like to use in this process, it doesn't have to be one of the existing mesh primitives. It can just be a thing that you drag in uh, from the other area. So if I swapped um, Suzanne for the cubes, I'm gonna disconnect the cubes and plug in Suzanne. Now I have a whole bunch of monkeys uh, on each one of those instances um, that were um, identified there. So um, is everybody able to, everybody has like objects in, in a random field on a cube, yes. With a bunch of cubes. Yeah, I was switching up uh, what the instance was. Um, so yours, I think, looks like this. So, or I changed the scale of these a little bit. It looks like a big version of this. Like if, if these are, 
Does it, it looks like that, right? And the reason this looks weird is because there's just a ton of cubes in, in this space and they're all crowding each other out. Um, so one thing that I did here to make them a little more visible was just make them smaller. Um, and there's an X, Y, and Z value here. And I could do that um, to be able to see them a little bit better. And then the other thing that I had done was I took uh, Suzanne here, the monkey, um, and dragged that like this into my field and then plug that in as, um, as geometry as an alternative example. So that just gave me you know, the monkey in all the places that the cube was previously. So you were up to date on that, yeah. Everybody else on top of that, yeah? Okay, good. Ida, was that like a, like get out of here? Or, or do you need a, a, a little bit of help with that? You, you're good. Okay, cool. So um, one thing that I wanted to show uh, is that like these, this is interesting, but they're all pointing the same direction. They're all the same size. So it's not, it's not feeling very random. It's feeling very much like I just cut and pasted many monkeys into random spots inside of a cube or on the perimeter of a cube. So um, what I wanna add now is I wanna go to add search and I wanna just add a random value. So I could just search random. If I click on that, I'll get a little box that says random value like this. And I'm gonna place this down here and I'm placing it deliberately near my instances on points because you'll see that instances on points has a value for rotation and for scale. And I wanna plug this random value into that. So if I do rotation, I'm just gonna plug this in here. Suddenly you see that these are mostly leaning in one direction, but they're sort of in slightly different orientations. I'm gonna give the, the maximum a large value like 360. And you'll see that now they're kind of pointing every which way. And you could play around with that value. So you can see as I'm moving this slider, it's rotating all of these monkeys in a very random fashion. Those of you who do animation, you can animate with geometry nodes. So like you could, you could just have objects that are, you know, spinning violently like this uh, in an interesting way. So I could find a, an amount of rotation that I like and leave it there. Is everybody able to do that with a random value? I wanna make another random value. So I could either go get another one or I could just do shift D. Shift D is duplicate. Um, I'm gonna set the value back down to something a little more reasonable and I'm gonna use that for scale. And then I'm gonna plug that value into the scale button here. And now you'll see that these, um, these exist at a bunch of different sizes and I can go in. So if I put the minimum and maximum scale to the same value, they would all be the same size, right? So if it was one and one, then they would, they would all be size you know, one, whatever that is. Um, but if I have a, a wide range, then they can, some will be small and some will be large. And again, with all of these, you have this seed value. So I can change the randomness. You know, I can, if I don't, it's kind of like rolling the dice. If I don't like the results I got, I can just randomize it again using the seed value. So I have these many, many monkeys rotated in randomized ways and scaled in random ways. And maybe um, just to show, I will, switch back to my original cube. And my cube uh, is small now, so I could play around with this value. So I could get kind of a constellation of these sort of cheese cubes in different sizes. And for that matter, I could use any, any other geometry that I would want to use. I will quickly mention that, as you would imagine, um, if, if you bring really detailed geometry in and start um, propagating it like crazy, um, you certainly run the risk of um, you know, having your computer freak out somewhat. Although one thing that seems to me um, 
to be true of geometry nodes is that it, it feels like a little bit more lightweight to, uh, method of doing some of this stuff, um, at least at the moment. Like it, you know, until we commit this design, it hasn't um, committed to having like millions of vertices in the model or something like that. All right. Um, so is everyone following this so far? You have some random objects, perhaps randomly scaled, perhaps randomly rotated, distributed across some other objects. Uh, so in my case, it's cubes on cubes, but in your case, it could be spheres on spheres or monkeys on something else. Uh, and, and that's all going okay so far, yeah? Raise your hand if you need any help with any of that so far. Good, okay. So um, one thing I would point out with this arrangement that I have, I like the way that it looks, but it's like a, not an, much of an object that I would feel comfortable trying to print because they're all just hanging there in space. So one thing I might think about is like, well, what if I could see the cube that these were all um, distributed on uh, or even intersect them with that? And so I wanted to um, show a few options for doing that. Um, so I could go to, um, let me see if I can do this just in a straight up way. I don't think I can. Okay. I want to go to add, uh, and I want to add a little node called join geometry. And this is like, uh, I feel like this is just like a little, um, what do you call it? Like a power strip that you can plug multiple appliances into or something. So I can take my original uh, input, which in my case was the default cube. And I'm starting way over here on the left side. I'm gonna stretch this across everything. I'm gonna ignore all those nodes and just plug it straight into the join geometry node. And now it adds that original cube um, and all the other ones are sort of scattered across it. So now I feel like this is a printable thing. This is kind of a cool texture. I could play around with this and, and be excited about this if I you know, tried a bunch of variations. Maybe I mess with the density of it. Um, maybe I change the um, seeds of the randomness as far as the rotation and the scale of these and the placement of them. Um, I have a lot of ways of kind of getting you know, different results for this. Uh, so I have now added that in. <clears throat> One last thing, like, let's say I was happy with this, I'm done. I wanna, I wanna go ahead and print this. Um, one last thing I would do um, is I have to add one more node that makes it, uh, makes it a geometry that we could actually export. So if I try and export this right now, I'll just get kind of a blank uh, object. So I have to do one more thing, which is um, it's called realize instances. And I was a little bit confused at like why you need to do this. Like why doesn't it by default realize those instances as like real geometry? And I think the reason why is that um, geometry nodes can handle this kind of visualization really easily. Um, but once it wants to realize the instances, it has to kind of draw out all the geometry and your model gets to be a little bit more heavyweight. Um, so for the purposes of printing, we would definitely need this realize instances in here in this case. So I'm gonna put this at the very end after join geometry. And that really won't change my output at all, um, except that when I do that, you'll see that all these um, numbers kind of light up on the left-hand side with um, locations of different vertices and the numbers of vertices and edges that are in the model. All that data pops up because suddenly I've kind of made that real. I've, I've committed to that. Um, I, I can still edit this in all the ways we've done before. Um, it's just uh, now a realized thing. So I could definitely uh, save and export this as an STL file. And I could think about how I might want to print that. In this particular case, if I wanted to print this object, I would definitely just split it down the middle and, and print the two sides and glue it together. I think that would be maybe um, a, a very effective way of doing that. But anyway, um, wanted to show that. Everybody following that so far. I wanted to show another um, way of working with kind of two groups of objects, which would be um, to use the Boolean processes that I think we're familiar with, where you can add or subtract an object from another. Um, so if I go to add search and I go to Boolean. There's a couple of options here. I want um, mesh. Boolean. 
And in this case, I'm going to put the mesh Boolean um, where the join geometry is. I'm gonna kind of replace that. Uh, so I'm going to try and unplug these other items. You'll see my whole thing goes blank. And I'm just gonna disconnect join geometry here. And so like any Boolean operation, you have object one and object two, uh, one being subtracted from the other. So what I would like to do is I'm gonna use my, my basic geometry, my input geometry. I'm gonna skip all the nodes and take that right to mesh number one. The idea being that like the first object I'm using is just my basic cube. And then I'm gonna take my instances, which were all the little distributed cubes. I'm gonna plug them into mesh number two as the Boolean difference. And I have noticed that sometimes, I think this might be a Mac thing, Oh, never mind. I have to connect this to here. That's what it might be. And I'm still having an issue. So sometimes I've noticed that I have to go up here and wait a minute, or I have to tab between edit and object mode uh, to see the thing. So now you can see this. It has taken my original cube and it's taken all the little distributed cubes that I had all over the place and it has subtracted them from that original. I kind of like the way that looks. And I think it's worth noting like if I went back down to my if I wanted something that was more gridded, more linear and less chaotic, I could go down to my original um, random rotation value and put both of them to zero. And now I've got like a, a pretty tight, you know, 90 degree uh, grid of things. It may be helpful to see this with the wireframe just to be able to visualize it. and I could play with features like the density. I have noticed that once you're using the Boolean feature, it tends to slow the computer down a bit, um, which is not surprising given the amount of sort of math that it's doing. And you know, as I change these values, I'm gonna get really different types of structures. So I have this thing that looks a little bit like sort of a modern apartment block or something like that, um, just made in this simple way. And if I change the seed value, I'll get all these kind of variations on that. All right, um, I've been running through a lot of different options here. Um, is that working out with everybody? I'm gonna take a break and just kind of walk around and see how folks are doing.